الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين اما بعد My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, it is important for us to be conscious of our Maker, the one who made us, the one who is in absolute control of every aspect of our existence, and the one whom we are going to return to very, very soon. It is only a person who is conscious of this fact that would be fortunate to be able to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the best way. This is why we have heard so many verses in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of the issue of taqwa, the issue of consciousness. One of them is a verse that we hear often. Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu attaqullah, wa intanzur nafsum ma qaddamat fi ghadim wa attaqullah. Inna Allah khabirun bima ta'amalun. O you who believe, be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And every single one of you should look into what you have prepared for tomorrow. Be conscious of Allah, for indeed He is all-knowing of your deeds. So this would mean every one of us needs to make sure that whatever deeds we do, they are in preparation for the day that we will meet with Allah, and that is known as tomorrow. Tomorrow meaning the future. This is why Allah says, وَالْتَنْظُرْ نَفْسٌ مَا قَدَّمَتْ لِغَفْ Each so each individual should look into his own deeds and each individual should look at what he has prepared for tomorrow. This is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made quite clear. So my job is to look at what I have done for the day when I meet with Allah and the same applies to you. This would help us from engaging negatively in the lives of one another. Sometimes we can become engrossed in the lives of one another in a way that we forget our own life. It is important to remind one another, be concerned about your own goodness primarily. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. What is of importance for us to realize also is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us in a state of weakness. Every one of us when we were made, we were very weak. So much so that if we were left by our parents or those who looked after us, perhaps we would have died. So Allah says, Allah الَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ مِنْ ضَعْفٍ ثُمَّ جَعَلَ مِنْ بَعْدِ ضَعْفٍ قُوَّةً ثُمَّ جَعَلَ مِنْ بَعْدِ قُوَّةٍ ضَعْفًا وَشَيْبًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has indeed created you in a state of, of weakness and from that state of weakness He then caused you to get to a state of strength and after the state of strength He returned you back to weakness and grey hair. And the reason why, so the scholars make mention of the reason why, he starts off by saying he created you in a state of weakness. And then right at the end he says weakness and grey hair is because when a child is weak, it is much easier to handle the child. The parents of a child handle the child with hope, with prayer to say may you have a long life, may you have good health and so on. But when, you, when a person becomes old after they had knowledge and after they had strength and after they had led a life full of whatever energies they have had, it becomes very difficult when they cannot walk anymore because they are irritated and they become irritant. And this is why when they become so old, it's not so easy to carry an old person around just like it was to carry a little child. But this is the test of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us because each one of us seated here and all of us who may listen to this later on, we've all been little babies at one stage and our parents or our guardians looked after us wholeheartedly. They carried us around. They changed literally our nappies and they did so much for us. As we have now grown in strength in our own lives, we will witness the same parents who looked after us when we were babies we will now be given an opportunity to look after them in the same way if we are lucky. And this is why a narration says that the Prophet ﷺ has shown surprise at those who see one or two of their parents, one or both of their parents, in their lives, 
who have become old in the presence of the people, meaning of us, for example, and they have not resulted in the entry into paradise of us through their service. Because it becomes extremely difficult. When a child is young, you teach the child. But when a person is old, forget about teaching them. They will teach you. They will tell you, even if there is a generation gap, they might keep on telling you something that may not be applicable in your life anymore due to the generation gap. And yet you will have to listen. You will have to be quiet. You will have to answer in a beautiful way. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it quite clear in a verse in Surah, uh, in Surah Al-Isra, in fact in Surah Al-Kahf, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has declared that you shall worship none but Him and you will be kind and good to your parents. And this includes whether they are Muslim or not Muslim, whether they are difficult or whether they are easy going, whether they happen to have their own bad habits or whether their bad habits are less, they have more good habits than bad. Whatever the instance is, kindness, there is no excuse to leave out. Never. You need to be kind. What is the meaning of kindness? Say that there is a parent who is unreasonable and they are swearing at you. Your duty is to be kind in return by knowing how to deal with it. If you swear in return, you have lost. But if you respond in a positive way, you may engage them in a respectful, kind of discussion. That is something that is called for. And this is why when a parent is not a Muslim, we have to obey them, we have to listen to them, we have to be kind to them. And the only exception is when they are telling us to do that which is against the law of Allah. Then two things need to happen. One is La Tutihuma and the other is Sahihuma fi dunya ma'ruf. It means do not follow what they have told you against Allah. They want you to go against Allah. So Allah's worship is, for example, dictating that you will not be party to buying and selling alcohol. And if your father or your parent tells you that you need to now go to the market, for example, and purchase the alcohol for, for him or for her, may Allah protect us all. It's just an example. You would not go and at the same time you do not swear them in return, nor do you scold at them or beat them up sometimes or even say a word that is bad. But you need to be candid and respectful together with kindness. So you may start off by saying, uh, I, I will not be able to do this. And if they start yelling at you and say, why, for example, you will have to engage when you see there is a verse of the Quran, alcohol is bad for you and so on, in a beautiful way. And if they continue screaming, you do not scream. And this is the beauty of a Muslim. When someone does something bad to you, you do not need to do the same bad in return to them. If someone swears at you, you calm down, smile at them perhaps. It may make them realize what I've done is wrong. That's a, that's a Muslim. The way you deal with someone, they will realize immediately what I did is actually very bad. This person is a good person. They will come to you after a day, after a week, after a month, after a year and apologize to you. To say, you know, I actually did something very bad. I swore at you, I shouted at you, I did this and that. You know, sometimes it happens to, with so many people, we, we become impatient with those who are slow. You know, the elderly, sometimes they are slow. When we drive on the roads, mashallah, sometimes you find the elderly, you know, they might find difficulty in turning their necks. They might sometimes not be able to see so clearly and they may have just cut you up slightly. Instead of mourning and starting to swear them, understand, one day you might get to the same position, that's our protectors. All you need to do is calm down, look at him, perhaps, you know, you don't even need to get angry or upset. You may want to warn in order to avoid an accident, but not unnecessarily. And this is why sometimes we use the horn so much that it becomes a point of temper and a point of heat and argument and sometimes even fighting. Just because we hoot at somebody for no reason. So calm down, this is a Muslim. Relax, we need to understand the rights of all, more so the rights of the elderly. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has reminded us of this. In fact, there is a beautiful narration of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wherein he makes mention of something very interesting that if a person has helped someone in need, if a person has helped someone in need at one stage, one day when they are in need, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will already have appointed someone to come for that particular need of theirs. 
So if I were to help someone cross the road who is, say, for example, unable to see clearly or to walk properly because they are old, by the will of Allah, one of two things would happen, and maybe even more, but all positive things. Either Allah will give me strength such that Allah's given strength to me would not let me require someone to help me cross the road because Allah has given me this thing. That's point number one. So I will, I will not be a person who would need help to cross the road. Although I used to help a lot of people cross the road because Allah says, I will help you cross the road by giving you the energy. You don't even need to rely on someone. Or point number two is, sometimes if we are unable to do it and we have been helping others in the same or we have been helping others who are in need. The day we are in that need, a person will come along to help us to cross that particular road and that path. For example, a wealthy person who continues to assist those who might be in debt within specific limits. If a day comes when that particular person happens to be in some form of need, Allah will create people who will come and help that particular person. And this is why we believe as you do unto others, so it shall be done unto you. We believe this. And we also believe when you do good, the good will return to you in reward and in many other ways. This is why Allah says, if you bring a good deed on the day of judgment, we will multiply it tenfold for you in reward. But whilst you were in the world, we would give you the benefit of it in so many different ways. Do you know that respecting the elderly and sitting with them and listening to their stories and learning from their experiences and perhaps, for example, spending on our own parents. That is an important point because when we were young, they spent on us. They did not ask for, for something from us. They were not reluctant. We needed food, they fed us. We needed medication, they rushed us to the hospital. We needed anything, they did it for us. So when we grow old, why is it we become reluctant to spend on them? Father is sick, may Allah protect us all and our fathers. I mean. If the father is ill and sick, we sit back and we're waiting. It's going to be a bit expensive to get this thing done. Let's just see if we can get it done for free. When we were sick, they did it for us without even batting an eye. That's a test of Allah. Yet we now have more wealth than sometimes they had a long time ago. So this is why to sit with them, to spend time with them, to learn from their experiences and so on. All this is part and parcel of earning the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, sometimes we have a life full of stress. Sometimes we have a life full of agony. Sometimes full of different worries and so on. You need to realize when you spend time with the elderly for the sake of Allah, especially your parents, you will find the blessings of Allah descend upon you. The mercy of Allah descend upon you because the Rahmah is closely connected to your parents. And we do know that us, as we develop ourselves and we become parents, we should not be difficult parents. A difficult <coughs> parent is he or she who really is unreasonable with his or her own children. Sometimes the weaknesses of human nature make us become so terrible as parents that our children don't even want to see us and they don't even want to contact us. Why? Because every time we talk to them we are harsh. Every time we talk to them we are raising past issues or we are saying something unreasonable. Let Islam be the measure. Let the law of Allah be the measure. Whatever Allah has taught, if you were to engage in it with your own children, they, it will be an honor for them to call you on a daily basis. My dad or my mom, how are you doing? And what is happening? I'm missing you. It is better someone calls you regularly to say how much they are missing you, than when you call them, they ignore the call. And then later on they say, I did not see the missed call. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us from falsehood. So my brothers and sisters, these are some of the gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us. A quick example that I'd like to cite today is the example of Musa alayhi. If not been old, he would have been here doing it himself. But look at how they as women folk got up to assist the father in his duties. They actually got up to help the father in his duty. How many of us even as males would get up to assist our fathers in earning a livelihood and in their duties. It's something to ponder over. So Musa alayhi salatu wasalam happened to help them and he helped them in a very beautiful way. The reason is that he saw that these people are here for a valid reason and they are people who are modest, they are sitting back. For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he assisted them and he made a dua. It ended such that 
he met the father of these women and he ended up several years later getting married to one of them by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want to pause there for a moment and just say something to make us think. Do you understand how by assisting with the correct intention, Allah will open your other doors that you did not even imagine? Here was Musa alayhi salam. Did he even think for a minute that I'm going to get married here? Not even at all. But he helped with the correct intention when the father saw that this man is genuine, he is sincere and so on, he made the offer. And Musa alayhi salam was in need of that at the time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fulfill our needs and may he make us from those who understand and realize. Take a look at another example from the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. When Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu came, this was in Makkah al-Mukarrama, he came with his old father to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Now Abu Bakr, his name was Abdullah ibn Abi Quhafa. And Abu Quhafa, his name was Uthman. So Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu, his name was Abdullah ibn Uthman. But he was called Abu Bakr, and his father was called Abu Quhafa. So Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu, he came in with Abu Quhafa. And he walked into the company of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw the old man being driven to, him as in being assisted, he immediately said, Oh Abu Bakr, why did you have to bring the old man here? I would have come to where he was. Why did you have to bring him to me? I would have come to him. Amazing. Look at the etiquette. Now the old man is listening and he knows. And this is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That Mecca, you know that they were far of Mecca who did not even like him. They tried very hard to smear his name sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But here he is, he continued with the good character, with the good conduct. He says, Oh Abu Bakr, as Siddiq, radiallahu anhu, had you not brought him, I would have come there. Or why did you bring him here? I would have come to see him. And so he sat right next to him. And when the two sat close, they spoke for a little while. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him, Would you enter Islam? He said, By all means, I'm entering Islam now. Subhanallah. In Arabic, it is worded so beautifully. It sounds so simple and so easy. But the background to it was the good character, the good speech, the good words. And to say amazingly that, you know what? The old man, I must make time for the old people to come to them rather than making them come to me. This is something amazing. This is why my brothers and sisters, if you want blessings, one afternoon, take a drive to meet your elderly parents, your elderly relatives, with your children and with anyone else who would like to go. Solely for the fact that it is an ibadah and it will result in the mercy of Allah descending upon you. You find so much. Today we are quick to run out on a holiday, to run out to have a meal at a certain restaurant, to do this and to do that. We are not saying that is wrong, but what we are saying is, have you not spent some time with the elderly? It is an act of worship. You too need to try out. Amazing. If I were to tell you right now that there is an amazing new restaurant down the street and the food is just too good, I think at some stage we would try it out. Wouldn't we? We would probably try it out. But this is the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is telling you, you want the mercy of Allah? Well, try this out. This is it. Amazing. Let's do it more often, my brothers and sisters. Let us visit our parents. Sometimes not only those who are related to you, but anyone who is elderly, visit them, listen to them, learn from their experiences. Some of it may be relevant, a lot of it will be relevant. Some of it may be irrelevant. And see, do not get upset and angry. Let them talk, let them have their say. They are also in need of love. They are also part and parcel of the community. And do you know what? The day you grow old, people will also come and reciprocate that love. And they will come by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and give you the company when you are very lonely. Today it's easy, we have a job to go to, whole day we are out, we come back, we can, we're enjoying. The day will come, if Allah wills, He might take us away earlier and that may He grant us Jannah and may He make it easy for us. But if He wants to give us a longer life, we will live for a while. And what will happen thereafter? We become old and lonely once again. No more job, I'm sitting at home, nobody's calling me, nobody's, you know. By that time technology will be so far that we don't know how to be in touch with people. You know, today if you have a person who's 90 years old, do you really think you're going to find him on WhatsApp? Well, I hope not. But at the same time, the day we are so old, there will be other technology and we don't know if we will even be in touch and in tune. So, make time. Go back to the original method of meeting 
and talking and see the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will descend upon you. There is also a narration of Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu who was one of the young of the Sahaba radiallahu anhu. He assisted Zayd ibn Thabit radiallahu anhu off his conveyance. And he actually put his hand in order to help him off. And they looked at him and he says, this is how we treat the elderly and the knowledgeable from amongst us. Imagine. This is something amazing. How do we treat the elderly and the knowledgeable amongst us? Do we treat them with respect? Remember one thing, and I have to say this, there is a fine line between respect and worship. Sometimes we have scholarly figures, mashallah, we respect them. We have the elderly, we respect them. But we do not engage in an act of worship because then we contaminate our link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the owner of worship. And this is why the Prophet sallallahu when speaking about the elderly, he makes mention of an interesting point. He says, لَيْسَ مِنَّا مَنْ لَمْ يَرْحَمْ صَغِيرَنَا وَيُوَقِّدْ كَبِيرَنَا He is not from amongst us who does not have mercy on the young and respect the older or the elder. When you see someone younger than you, have mercy on them. They might still need a little bit of learning. You know, you see a teenager running and dashing around. Instead of getting angry and upset, educate them positively in a beautiful way. You, should, you lead the way. They will look at you as a role model in no time. But if you are also to act as barbaric, then what will happen to society and community? Then also we need to respect those who are older than us. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the respect as well. Every one of us would like to be respected. Well, it's about time we started respecting others and then inshallah, we will find that it is reciprocated. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught us in so many different ways. The most important way he taught us was that he led by example. He did it, not just to speak. You know, sometimes we tend to instruct our children, but we don't realize they watch us doing something opposite what we told them. How will that be of impact? When you tell them something, do it, show them. And inshallah, in that way, there won't be lots of growth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of the verse that I spoke about a little bit earlier in Surah Al-Isra. Uh, in, in fact, it's a verse of Surah Al-Kahf. Surah Al-Isra. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that He has declared that none will, will be worshipped besides Him and you will be kind to your parents. He continues thereafter to mention something very interesting. He says, if one or both of them arrive at old age in your presence, watch out how you speak to them. Be careful how you talk to them. Watch your tongue with your parents. Watch out. فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفِّنْ do not tell them a bad word. Don't tell them a bad word. Disrespect. Oof. That is the term in the Arabic language. Don't even tell them that. Relax. Calm down. Let them have their say. You have your say. When you cried and cried all night as a colleague child, what did they do? Perhaps they were awake with you all night, every night, for so many months. Now they are just blurting out a few words once in a while. You also relax. Calm down. Pat them on their backs. And tell them, you know what, don't worry, you're my dad and I love you. MashaAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us understand. لا تقول لهما أف ولا تنهوهما Do not rebuke them. It is very tempting to say bad words to your folks when they are old. Very tempting. Why? Because they are unreasonable according to you. Because there is a generation gap sometimes. Their thinking is different. Allah has addressed the matter, warning myself and yourselves that watch out what you say and do not rebuke. Do not use a swear word. Do not use a word that is bad or hurtful. May Allah grant us ease. Sometimes we have to advise them because they are unreasonable. Do so in a kind and respectful way. Remember this. Sometimes we have to advise them because it does not mean you allow your parent to continue doing something haram and oppressing you or your wife or any one of your family and so on. There has to be a limit to things. So when it is getting beyond the limit, you need to Bring it down, but with respect and kindness. Address them, have a meeting two, three, four, five times with them to address the matter until they understand in a beautiful way. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you need to be merciful towards them. And you need to make a dua and supplication of mercy for them because they are the ones who brought you up when you were young. So you say, Oh Allah, have mercy on them in the same way that they have brought me up. In fact, this is a verse of Surah Al-Isra, verse number 23 and 24. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every single one of us and grant us ease. 
my brothers and sisters, we have spoken quite a bit when it comes to the elderly and our parents and so on. Remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instructed us this immediately after He speaks about worshipping Him. That shows how important it is. And I want to end by making mention of how important that is. One of the reasons is Allah created myself and yourselves. He created us. So we owe Him worship. Who did He choose to bring me into the world and you into the world? He chose parents. Those parents, because He created and He chose them for me and you, we have an obligation towards them. It is a test of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every single one of us and our parents. Make it easy for us to respect the elderly and our own parents. Aqulu qawli hada wa astaghfirullah li malakum wa nisai bin muslimin. Fastaghfiruhu wa innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim. الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهديه الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله صلى الله وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد My beloved brothers and sisters the gifts of Allah upon us are plenty the gifts of Allah upon us are so many that if we were to count them we would never be able to Collect them. We would never be able to do justice to the gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it requires pondering, it requires thinking, it requires gratitude and thankfulness. And this is how we will be able to appreciate as many of the gifts of Allah upon us. One of the gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon this beautiful nation, mashallah, the United Arab Emirates. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed this place with great peace, great security and great gifts of Allah. If you take a look, right at the moment we are going through the anniversary of the union of the armed forces in this particular country, we need to be thankful of this. There are many countries that do not have this stability. Not only should we be thankful of it, but we should make sure that we as citizens or as residents should contribute positively towards the peace and stability of the nation. Never should we do anything that will result in the snatching away of peace. And this is why the thought in your heart is very, very important. It is the seed that will translate into an action. When you have a good thought in your heart, you will have good actions, good words. The minute you have a bad thought of hatred or jealousy in your heart, it will translate, even if it is a few years down the line, into action that will be negative. So thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us lesson. And thank Allah for uniting the armed forces, uniting the nation and letting it prosper as a united nation that actually gets along one another. Each one is looking at how they can assist in not only their own growth, but even in the growth of the other. So this is a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not easy to be a part of the armed forces. The hadith of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam makes mention of two of the eyes, two types of eyes that the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not touch. The first is that which cried, any eye that shed tears for the sake of Allah. So if your eyes have cried for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the hadith says they will not be harmed or affected or even touched by the fire. It's important that we learn and when we listen to the verses of Allah, we are moved by it. The second eye is the eye that is guarding for the sake of Allah in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the nation. So in this particular case, anyone who is looking out for the unruly elements or for any element that may result in the harming of the nation, and they are looking out, they have spent sleepless nights, they are included in it because their aim is to promote the peace and to consolidate it and to hold it. It is important that we take note of this and we appreciate it and we celebrate the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with such goodness. Indeed, we have been instructed to send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the instruction is in the verses of the Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabihi ya ayyuhu al-nabina aman. Sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma fasalli wa sallim wa barik wa amrim ala abdika wa rasulika Muhammadin afdal al-khalqi. Wa akram al-ghusuli wa atallahu ma'an khulafai al-rashidin. Al-a'imma al-mahdiina abi bakrin wa awa wa uthmana wa ali. 
اللهم ارفع عنهم وعن سائر الصحابة والتابعين وعنا معهم بمنك وكرمك يا أكرم الأكرمين، اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين، اللهم آمنا في أوطاننا وأصلح أئمتنا وولاة أمورنا واجعل ولايتنا في من خافك واتقاك واتبع نظامك يا رب العالمين، اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكف عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار. اللهم انصر اخواننا في كل مكان، اللهم انصر الذين اخرجوا من ديارهم بغير حق الا ان يقول ربنا الله، اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا، اللهم ارحمنا، اللهم ارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين، اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين، اللهم ربنا هب لنا من ازواجنا وذرياتنا قرة اعين واجعلنا للمتقين اماما، اللهم ادفع عنا الغلا والوبا والربا والزنا والزلازل والمحن وسوء الفتن ما ظهر منها وما بطن. اللهم وفق ولي امرنا رئيس الدولة الشيخ خليفة بن زايد، اللهم وفقه لما تحب وترضى، اللهم يا رب العالمين وفق الشيخ محمد بن راشد لما تحب وترضى، وأيده وإخوانه حكام الإمارات وأولياء عهودهم، اللهم يا إله العالمين ارحم الشيخ زايد وارحم الشيخ مكتوم رحمة الله عليهما آباء هذه الدولة، اللهم ارحمهما وارحمنا جميعا. اللهم ربنا تقبل منا انك انت السميع العليم وتب علينا انك انت التواب الرحيم عباد الله ان الله يقوم بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبذيء يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله اكبر واقيموا الصلاه يرحمكم الله عز وجل